Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on trend trading. And before we start class, I'd like to wish everybody a happy and healthy New Year, and I hope everybody enjoys this festive time of year. If you notice on the ETX education calendar, we have a whole bunch of new classes coming for you next month. We've changed our format. We'll be doing a lot more classes right on the trading platform and more classes to help you trade more successfully. Now, as you all know, ETX is a regulated provider and therefore I'm required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETX Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors, and we do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned are for educational purposes only. And for those of you who join us through the internet and don't know much about ETX, we are a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA and up at the present, Binary Options, which is off offered on our platform, is not re a regulated product, but will be starting January 2018. Um, and it, don't it doesn't make a difference because anything done by ETX is under the control and the watchful eye of the FCA. All your funds are segregated and secure, and we do everything that is required in under the regulators wherever we offer our trading. And don't forget, we're also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you can select from our binary option platform, which is great for novice traders because there's no leverage or margin. The dollar amount you type into the screen is the only risk that you are taking. So you know your profit and your loss exactly to the penny before you make a trade. So if you look if you're looking to figure out how the markets work and start getting an understanding of the, you know, the different asset classes and how they react at different times, binary options is a good way to get started. But then you should be ready to move up to our ETX Trader Pro platform. That's our online platform. You simply log in, nothing to download, and it gives you one of the best trading experiences where you can trade CFDs and Forex spread bets if you're in London. And then when you want to move up to the more experienced type trades or use a more professional platform, you can download our ETX MT4 platform. But you can use all of these platforms and none of them, one of them, it's up to you. You make the decision. And then all you have to do is contact customer support and they'll make arrangements for you to be able to use each of the platforms, you know, whichever you like, you decide. So let's get started talking about trend trading. Now, tonight's class is being recorded. And to see a recorded version at a later time, just use the same link you used to come to tonight's class. And after the class is over in about oh, 24 hours, when you go to that link, you'll just see the recorded version. So you can hear me talk all day and night long then. Now, trend following is perhaps the most popular long-term strategy in all the financial markets. As a trading strategy, it is exceedingly effective and profitable when the conditions are favorable. It's quite straightforward in its methodology, and there are many individuals, past and present, famous and obscure, who have used this strategy to success and riches. We should note that the technical aspects of trend following is in fact quite simple, but also that it requires before everything else, discipline, sound money management, and of course, risk management, and the patience from a trader. Trend follow is not a short-term method, and patience and termination are as important as the correct analysis as the result. Now, please understand, we all know about trends. Tonight, we're not here to talk about trend lines. We're talking about trends. That's the direction a market is moving. So we have trend patterns, we have trend lines, and we have trend trading. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about finding markets that are moving in a particular direction. So trends are created by powerful underlying economic factors, which may be all that, which may not be all that clear to those who are not very familiar with fundamental analysis. Now, the short-term trader 
will look at an event, whether it's the U.S. passing its new tax or a Brexit vote or whatever is going on, whether it's a new retail sales number, and they will look at the immediate results of how that event affected a particular asset, whether it's the, you know, if it's retail sales out of the UK, did, is it better? So did the pound go up or down? Where a longer term trader or somebody following a trend trading is going to be saying to themselves, okay, this event factored into the overall economy and should take the pound on a slow movement upward. This is going to cause the trend because we see retail sales getting better. That means we have manufacturing should be affecting and we're going to be looking to identify an economic movement up or down or in a company whether it's going to have a slow rise up we're not looking for that initial bang that short-term traders take when an economic event happens whether again whether it's an earnings report whether it's something that's affecting gold or whether it's an economic report but the simple patterns created by price action in response to economic events can be often identified through methods that are easy to learn and apply. Thus, the retail trader has as much potential of success as the most experienced analyst if he can control his emotions and behave logically. So to apply this strategy, we must be aware of the existence of a trend. Without identifying a trend, we would just be gambling. And that's not the purpose of trading Forex. Both fundamental and technical analysis can be employed for identifying a trend. And both of them have their advantages and drawbacks. So, you know, when we talk in our classes and you come to our classes on technical analysis, we talk about leading and lagging indicators. We talk at those that will predict a trend or confirm a trend. Okay. So you can use those to confirm that a trend is taking place. Or you can use fundamental analysis. But we want to see that a definite trend is in place, not a sideways moving, not a consolidation, and not a weak trend where things are etching up but moving up and down. We're going to be looking for nice formed trends. It is, in general, a good idea to use a combination of technical and to, uh, fundamental analysis in deciding on a trend's character and deciding on our entry and exit points. So remember this word, I said it and it's important, a trend's character. Okay. Recognizing a trend and being able to interpret whether it's a strong trend, a weak trend and how it is functioning is very, very important. It is the key to trend trading. So. What we want to do is we want to look for assets and we want to observe the market. And where our general observation of a market swing points is the first point of call in determining if a market is trending. If you do not see a pattern of HH, HL, LH, and LL, now what do they mean, okay? Higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows. Higher highs and higher lows is an uptrend. Lower highs and lower lows is a downtrend. And we need to see a continuous pattern of these. But instead, you see sideways price movement with no obvious general up or down direction to it, then you are probably looking at a range bound market or one that is simply chopping back and forth. So the first thing we want to do is use observation. So you shouldn't have to think too hard about whether a market is trending or not. It should be easy to see. Most traders make Trend discovery, way too difficult. If you take a common sense and patient approach, it, it's usually fairly obvious if a market is trending or not just, or just not, by looking at the raw price action in its charts from left to right. Make sure you mark the swing points on your chart as it will draw your attention to them and help you see if you have higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows as we discussed. So as you can see in this little sketch over here, now granted, everything's nice to see in my little sketches. Seeing it in the real world is a whole different scenario. But the fact is, identifying trends 
with just looking at them isn't so difficult. You see them quite easily. So you must first choose whether you want to employ technical or fundamental analysis for your method or a combination. But first, you have to decide. You have to lock it in. OK, I'm going to use RSI as stochastics. I'm going to use a trend line, and I'm going to use support. I mean, just decide what you're going to use as your tools, because you can't jump all over the place. So fundamental analysis can provide you with important information which can predict the strength and length of the trend, while technical analysis can show you how it develops. So did you get the fine points here? Fundamental analysis can provide you with information which can predict the strength and the length of a trend, while technical analysis can show you how it develops. It is possible to base your strategy on one of these to the exclusion of the other. And it is still possible to turn a profit if you were lucky enough. But our principle has always been to reduce the role of luck to as little as possible. Fundamental analysis is more reliable than technical analysis in defining a trend that has long-term potential. But without technical analysis, it would be extremely difficult to decide when and how to trade. So in other words, we will get our entry points more from the fundamental analysis where our technical analysis will confirm the trend and help us decide where it should go. So technical analysis can suggest the beginning of a trend, but is unlikely to tell you much about the length or the strength of the trend. Thus, I suggest that you use both the tools. With fundamental factors eliminating the false signals of technical analysis and technical tools providing you with time price frames for deciding on entry points. Because remember, fundamental analysis can't tell you how far an asset will move. It can't tell you exactly where to jump in the market, and it sure can help you pick your stop loss points. So there are many technical tools that, you, that, can, can, that can signal the existence of a trend. But they are an equal number of false signals generated by them. Remember, that there's only three kinds of trends that can exist at any time. What are they? You all know what they are. An uptrend, a downtrend, or a sideways trend. That's it. Now, simply take two random points on a chart and draw a moving average on it. And the pattern that arises can be analyzed as a trend. So one of the best tools that you can use for spotting a trend or confirming a trend is a simple moving average. Because what does a moving average do? It takes the noise out of the marketplace. And it helps you see what is happening in the markets. So let's pop over to a live chart and let's take a look at if we can spot something here. So let me pop a Euro US dollar chart on your screen. Okay. And I've got one set up for us. This is gold. This is the current gold chart. Now, we're looking at gold on a one hour chart. Again, remember this is for education purposes. We're using live charts, but we're not here tonight making a trading decision on gold. We're not, I'm not here giving you a trading advice or signal. I'm simply telling you how to build this on your chart. So now we just looked at this chart. Now, what did you see? We see gold's in an uptrend. That's not difficult. Now, can we confirm whether this is a good trend? Well, this case, I was able to very easily drop a beautiful trend line on the chart because look at this. I went from my swing low and extended my chart out, making sure nothing broke the trend line, the potential line. And look at that. I got three immediate, I actually got more, but I got three immediate points in common. So that tells me I actually have a valid trend line. Now, you don't need a valid trend line. To, trend, to trade trend because you still have a trend. This was still an uptrend whether I got a, a trend line on here or not. 
but I also look at my character of my trend. And what we want to see in a trend is what? Higher highs and higher lows. That means we steadily move up this way. Okay. So that means that's one of the reasons it hasn't broken the trend because the lows keeping higher lows. We also want to look for the development of our trend. And our trend should look like push and ease, push and ease, push and ease, push. Okay. Now, because we're always developing higher highs and, and higher lows, what we get is each ease and push turn is higher than the previous low. Okay. Now, we have a very nicely developed trend. That wasn't complicated. Believe me, I didn't search the markets looking for this tonight. I happened to be popping up a chart and one of my standard charts was a gold chart. And look how beautiful that is. This, this did not make us do any work. And if you notice, we really haven't used much technical analysis. We haven't used any complicated technical analysis because we were able to see that we're in a very strong uptrend. Okay. Now, this is a very mature uptrend. Okay, and it happens to be. We might have spotted it earlier, but it doesn't matter. As long as we have something moving in a trend and the trend is not going into oversold or overbought zones, we can still trade that trend. Because again, we're not looking to be simple, smart day traders opening a position in the morning and closing it an hour later. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm gonna ask you one personal request. I don't like to ignore people's questions. If you would sit through the webinar, I will try my best to get through all these points, but just because some idea hits your mind at this moment doesn't mean we can deviate from the class. And we're not ready to talk about stop losses until we're getting ready to make a trade. We haven't decided where, at what point we're gonna start making a trade. So follow the class along and we'll go in one concise fashion from the beginning to the end, okay? So please, I'm not ignoring you. I just need to get to where we're going. Thanks. So let's go back to my PowerPoint and continue moving forward with our class. Now, It is basic or it is necessary at least to have a basic understanding of the economic factors that create trends before deciding on the validity of a chart pattern. Because we want to look for assets that are not just moving up. Why? We, we want to see what is pushing gold. Okay. So we want to know what economic factors are pushing gold. Because it should be very strange that gold is rising at the level it is while the stock markets are hitting record highs. Because usually when there's a run in one market, that's where the money's going. So people are selling off in the other markets. In this case, we have what? We have stock markets rallying because of the US tax reform. But the rest of the globe is dealing with a lot of uncertainty. And even though we had strong U.S. economic data today, it hasn't really affected gold. But on the other hand, even with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, we should have seen gold easing back down. But gold hasn't done that because we should have, in a typical world, seen the dollar climbing on the raise of interest rates. But that hasn't happened either. And these are fundamental factors, and we need to understand how these factors are affecting the trend. Now, if we're not looking at Forex or in this case, gold, we need to be looking at stocks. And if we're looking at stocks, we wanna look at earnings reports. We wanna look at the, you know, this tax, this tax referendum in the US is gonna have a big effect on the value of stocks, Apple and Google and big time stocks, because they're getting a big cutback and there's lots of things in this tax referendum about allowing them to move money back into the U.S. 
that they've been holding overseas and other tax incentives. So this is going to help those stocks. So we would want to see how those stocks or the indices are trading. So the trend that we seek to trade is different from the random fluctuations, rage patterns, or similar price moves in the price itself. In the absence of any technical indicators, can still be recognized as showing a trend. So if you notice, okay, right now this is uh, you know, just a mock-up chart here. But if you flipped it over and this asset was running in an uptrend, this would be very similar to the real chart we looked at for gold. Gold is offering a proper, beautiful opportunity for a trend trader. So depending on the type of trend, that is an uptrend or downtrend, successive highs and lows should constitute a rising or falling pattern with relatively few irregularities. But such a case is often a rarity and traders will have to back his technical patterns with conviction that can perhaps only be gained through fundamental analysis. Now, if the trend can be identified visually, why use technical tools? Well, even though we can notice the existence of a trend, we still need technical tools to trade it and to time it. So some of the best ways to use trend trading is with a simple, not many technical indicators, but a simple stochastics chart or an RSI chart. And we, what we want to look for is divergence. Does anybody know what we talk about or what we mean when we say that an indicator is showing divergence? It is a very unique way of using all indicators, stochastics, MACD, um, RSI. What we're looking for <coughs> is when an indicator, especially the, the more common ones, the trending indicators, are diverging from the movement in price. So when we see price on a chart and price is making lower lows, so in this case, the price is moving down and we see it's forming lower lows. In the gold chart, we were seeing higher highs. But what do we see on our indicator chart? We see lower lows to higher lows. The indicator chart is moving in the opposite direction from the price movement. So what we're getting is a divergence. Price is moving in one direction while the indicator is moving in the opposite direction. So that tells us that we have a good opportunity coming. It's going to tell us that the markets are reversing. Now, with trend trading, we're looking at getting in multiple trades for small amounts of pips. We're not looking to get rich with one trade. We're looking to get entry and exit points as price moves through a through this trend. Okay. We're looking to spot the trend early and be able to get multiple trades. So like in this example, we had one, two, three, four different trades as price was falling, as the pound was falling. Okay. And we look for four different entry points. So this is one of the reasons we use moving averages. And a good combination would be a co is two moving averages for when they cross over or when price breaks through the moving average. So depending on what asset you're looking at, okay, and what, in, what market is in, you would have to decide what the proper time frame for the moving averages you're looking at. So what we want to do is we're going to go back over this gold chart. And we're going to drop on here a simple moving average. And we're going to use a 20 day or 20 time frame moving average. And we're going to use what's called an exponential 
moving average. But an exponential move, a moving average, as you all know, is just the time frames added together and divided. An exponential moving average gives a little bit more weight to the more recent prices and a little bit less weight to the older prices. And it therefore gives you a little bit more action. You have simple moving averages, weighted moving average, exponential moving averages. You don't have to do any calculation. I just prefer EMAs over simple moving averages. So let's get this on the chart so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to make this a bright yellow line so you can see it better. And we'll make it pretty bold. Actually, let's make it more orangey. So I think you can all see it pretty well out there. Okay, so now we have our moving average on our chart. So when price crossed the moving average, at each point, it would have given us an entry signal. And that's using a very simplistic trading decision, but it's a very good one. Let's also drop on here RSI as our indicator on the bottom to see when the trends are about to change. Because remember, in this case, we've got a fully developed uptrend as opposed to the beginnings of an uptrend. Come on, if I could spell better, we'd be all right, RSI. So now we have our RSI on the bottom as an indicator letting us know where the trends are. Remember, we're looking for divergence, but we're also looking for it to be over. So what we can see here, and I just haven't actually weighed these out, but see here, we have higher highs and higher lows, and we have the indicator moving in the opposite direction of price at that point. So we had a divergence. So this would have given us some very nice entry points right about here to trade this asset going up. We could have looked for several points in this trend. We would have liked to have seen this trend developing here so that we could have started entering the market here. Like I said, we have a fully developed trend, which is very unusual to find. We came off of a very nice downtrend made our lowest point here and everything, look at that. I mean, look at where our stochastics gave to us, told us the market was oversold and told us the market was reversing right here, okay? Because it dropped down into what's about 20. So we had everything in place to be aware of this trend reversal and the start of the new uptrend. And we could have gotten many trades in along the line. Let's go back to my PowerPoint here. Trending markets tend to make strong moves in the direction of the trend, followed by periods of consolidation or counter trend retrace before the next leg in the direction of the trend. And these are what we call the, remember I showed you the push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. These are the retracements before it goes to its next leg. You will notice this pattern happens in almost any trend you find. Typically, what happens to many traders is that they will make some money during the periods of strong directional trend movement, but then they continue to trade as the market takes a breather from the trend and consolidates. It's these periods when traders give up all the gains they, must, they just made when the market was moving aggressively. So the difference in trend traders, we want to enter and exit, enter and exit, enter and exit, enter and exit. So we would basically be trading the top and the bottom of each push and ease. And support and resistance would help you also identify these very well. So you need to learn to identify the different parts of the trend. This will help you avoid over trading during the choppy or consolidated periods and will give you a better chance of profiting when the trend makes a strong move. So in other words, one trader 
might have entered, say, silver here and tried to ride silver all the way up here and understand that these were eases and retracements, not reversals, where a trend trader would have traded each peak in awe, each peak in awe, each peak in awe for smaller amounts of the gain because he doesn't want to be in here when the, the market moves back. So in other words, price moved up to the resistance level, fell back down to the support level, moved back up to the new resistance, and this resistance now became support. And you can see each one of these moving up. You get new support levels, and each time it breaks the support level or breaks the resistance level, it becomes the new support level. So we can see that a trending market tends to move in spurts, moving in one direction of the trend and then stalling to take a breath before another leg is in the direction of a trend. And this is typically how it has to be. If it isn't doing this, then you don't want to be in that market because it means something is pushing that market too hard. You want to see this well-developed trend. And you want to see it early, though. Because we don't want to be in here when it goes into the sideways consolidation. Now, these retraces are when we have the highest potential for high probability entries within the trend. Often a market will retrace to approximately the level of its previous swing point before the trend resumes. In an uptrend, these swing points are support in the downtrends, they are resistance. Look at the very first diagram in, in this article, which I showed you earlier, and for a refresher. So let's look at the chart we just looked at, but this time with the support and resistance levels. These support levels resulted after the market began to retrace lower within the structure of the broader uptrend. And each time that we can draw one of these on, So as price was moving up in this case, this was our resistance level. We had to break through it. Once it broke through, it became our new support level. So then price eased back down to that support level, which is the level formed over here. It also formed a new resistance level here, which became the new support level as it moved back up. Okay. So it's constantly now. These are not one-time levels. We got these levels from before, but this is how we identify that and make them as the important levels. So note the swing points in an uptrend created as the market retraces lower. The market will typically retrace back to the previous swing point area and then bounce higher, resuming the uptrend. These are points where we want to look for price action setups. So in an uptrending market, what do we want to do? We only want to buy in an uptrending market. Okay. So therefore, we're going to look for the price setup when the price comes back down to its newly created support level. And each time it hits to that support level, we would be entering a buy opportunity. Remember, you don't want to trade against the trend. Now, all of this sounds a little bit simplistic, but it takes a little bit more time because market timing is very important. Market timing never works when one is trying to predict reversal points on a technical basis. However, market timing in the context of a trend with the purpose of picking the counter trend extremes and using them to enter a trade is necessary and profitable. And there lies the main principle of trend following strategy. Recognize the trend, identify counter trend moves and use them to enter a trade in the direction of the trend. So in other words, market was moving up, it counter trend down to its support level. Be ready to enter that trend when it bounces off of that support level. The best tools for trending fo following are supplied by moving averages and simple price charts. Bar charts, candlesticks, and many others can equally be useful if employed with moving averages. It is possible to use moving average crossovers and a myriad of other methods but wh whichever you choose to use, you should ensure that, that you do not complicate the main aspect of the strategy, which, which is trend following. So the thing about this is 
we don't want to make it complicated. You know, you don't need to use MACD in combination with RSI and a combination with with uh, stochastics and 22 different things you're looking at. Trend following or trend trading is a relatively simple thing. You're using one indicator to confirm the trend. Okay, you can find whichever one you want. You don't want to spend lots of time because you'll never master all of the different indicators. So find one that you know and use it as a confirmation of what you're seeing in price action. So if you know how to look at a chart, you know how to locate support and resistance, and you can identify the counter trend points, you're ready to trade. So MACD also works as a great indicator. MACD, RSI, or stochastics, they're all, and MACD will actually give you the buy signals and the sell signals. So which time frame do you recommend for moving averages? If you want to trade on a weekly or daily basis, the 100-day MA will probably be able to capture most of the important trends for you. But that's if you're trading on a longer-term level. If you're trading in the Forex or CFD market, we need shorter. So we're going to be using a 20 period. Some people use a 9. Okay, You can use a moving average crossover combining a 10 and a 30. You have to decide what fits your trading and what's going to fit the market you're in. But as you can see in this chart, it's not, let me clean up my markings for a second here. It's not very complex. Now, in this case, we're using our Japanese candlesticks to help identify price patterns. But we can simply see how price is moving in a well-defined trend. Ease, push up, ease, up, ease, up, ease, up, ease. We can see each time it's come down to the support level. We can see, obviously, the price movement. And we could have entered an entry point here. We could have exited here. Because look at that. We entered based on the moving average. We exited it based on the crossover of the moving average. We also got the buy and sell signals and our RSI. So it's a simple, easy process. Okay. Not very long trades, but several trades in a trend. Okay. In and out, in and out on, on support and resistance. Okay. So in this trend, this overall trend, we could have actually gotten, this was in Euro US dollar a while back, but technically in this entire trend, we would have gotten 17 different trades in this uptrend. That would have been a nice little package of profit. And even if you have some that end up small movements, okay, or some that end up with small losses, or the trend ends while you're still in the market. If you made four trades and three of them were winning trades and one was a losing trade, you still came out a winner. You have to know where to take your profit. You have to know where to put your stop losses. This partly depends on the term and the nature of the trend following method. A stop loss order can be placed a short distance above or below the trend line, whether it is provided by a moving average or a simple line drawn on the chart. In our opinion, the trend follower should not realize his profits until he has a good reason to do so. The purpose of the strategy is to focus on underlying price dynamics by stripping out volatility and short-term movements. And there is the, a little logic to realizing profits in response to fluctuations. But we have to be able to put our stop losses somewhere because we can't afford to get stopped out and we have to protect ourselves from risk all the time. So this trading method involves a risk management component that uses three elements. Now, if you're looking at shares, number of shares held, the current market price and the current market volatility. If you're not looking at shares, then we would look at the size of the contract you're holding. An initial risk rule determines position size at entry time of entry. Exactly how much to buy or sell is based on the size of the trading account and the volatility of the issue. Changes in the price may lead to a gradual reduction 
or an increase of the initial trade. On the other hand, adverse market movements may lead to an exit of the entire trade. So first we wanna look at price. One of the first rules for trend following is the price is the main concern. Traders may use other indicators showing where price may go next and what it should be, but as a general rule, these should be disregarded. A trader need only be worried about what the market is doing, not what the market might do. The current price and only the price tells you what the price market is doing. Money management. Money ma is another decisive factor of trend following and is not the timing of the trade or the indicator, but rather the decision on how much to trade over the course of the trend. Now, risk control. Cut losses is the rule. This means that during periods of high market volatility, the trading size is reduced, not increased. During losing periods, positions are reduced and trade size is cut back. The main objective is always to preserve capital until a more positive price trend appears. So rules, trend following should be systematic. Price and time are pivotal at all times. This technique is not based on the analysis of fundamental supply and demand factors. Once you've set up and decided how you want to trade, you need to set your rules. Like I will enter you know, $200 of risk at each resistance level, as long as these factors are holding true. And I will exit at this point. Okay. But in Forex, bearish and bullish trends are typically equally as violent and potent. Whereas equity markets, we tend to see lower moving price action in bull markets along with lower volatility. Downtrending markets tend to be fast and volatile in equity markets. Forex tend, trends tend to be the same in their volatility and price action, whether the trend is up or down. And this is the unique thing about Forex. We can actually, and that's why it's things like Fibonacci numbers and, and work so well, is because the downtrend which is followed by an uptrend are usually just, they usually negate each other. They, 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 so the uptrend will usually be as far down as that original downtrend. And the next downtrend will be pro usually down as low as that prior, prior uptrend. Because as you know, in the currency market, you don't have that big of a major shift in price of an asset. It moves very, very small amounts of points or pips. So elements of a trend following trading plan rules is the simple rules presented here are good enough to replicate the performance of many large name trend following head funds, which with high precision and correlation. In my book, I, well, I do have a book coming out and I detail some of these ways or my book, on, you can find them on Amazon, uh, my book on um, momentum indicators. Make no mistake though, the trading system rule is least important component of the trend following strategy. Position size is always important, how much you're going to involve. Trend filters, long positions are only allowed to be open if to say the 50 day moving average is above the 100 day moving average or the 10 and the 30, whatever rule based set of, of rules you've come up with. Entry signal, enter long positions only when the 50-day moving average is higher or vice versa for shorts. Okay. Decide what your rules will be. But there's an old saying, the trend is your friend and never trade against it. Remember, you want to first locate a market that is starting an uptrend or starting a downtrend and trade in the direction of the trend. When it moves against the trend, that's your signal point to end that trade. So move up on the thrust, out on the ease, up on the thrust, out on the ease. But just remember, keep calm and follow the trend. So this one line pretty much sums up all the quantity that traders have faced with trading trends. While a bias has been exhibited in the marketplace and may continue, there is no such thing as a sure-fired trend continuation setup. So when the trend doesn't continue, the traders often advise to look to mitigate the loss so that a reversal doesn't damage their trading account too badly. In an effort to be as precise as possible, many traders 
will move down to a lower time frame in an effort to get a more detailed look at the move inside the longer term price trend. So price action can help traders diagnose and trade the trends. And the indicators that I recommend are RSI, Stochastics, or MACD. And MACD is nice because MACD will also give you the appropriate triggers. Now, exit. The best exit points are on three average true range moves against the position. Okay. I like to use a, I will continue to use my crossover moving averages, which will give me my, which will tell me when to get out of the market. It will give me the exit signal and I'll run like hell. I like moving average crossovers and I like MACD. MACD will give me my buy and my sell signals as well as giving me my, my volatility. So it will give me nice exit signals. So trading a trend following system on a single market or only on a few different markets is suicidal. There may be long periods, even years, when there is simply no trend in any given market or asset class. The key idea is to trade many markets covering all asset classes at the same time. If you fail to do so, the strategy will simply not work. The investment universe will choose for you which, where, and where you'll find the trends. Tweaking buy and sell rules so you can choose wisely. You could choose a broad set of markets and avoid too high a concentration in a single sector. In the long run, a healthy balance between all major sectors yields the best results because what you want to do in trend trading is you don't care the asset. You're looking for a particular movement in the market. Okay. You only want to look for a well-developed trend that is starting to give you these clear cut signals that is going to continue moving forward. But you want to look, find it when it's starting and ride it till it's ending. So they're not easy to find, but you can just thumb through a lot of charts and a lot of different indicators to find them. Okay. And so just sit back and just you know, pick out 10, 20, 30 of your charts and look for them. Bounce through them. You know, Do whatever you want to do with them and find them. Like, Could you imagine what would have happened when you found Bitcoin as it formed its huge uptrend? And you found it in the early part of that trend setting. And it's given us perfectly good trend trading opportunities, buying and selling on each one of those bounces. Now, after all, the future is unknown and nobody has a crystal ball that will magically foretell tomorrow's price movement. But the fact of the matter is the biases do exist, trends do take place, and in many cases, those trends may continue. The types of strategies are endless. So, in our next class, which is next month, we'll take a look at some very simple Forex strategies that we can apply trend trading. Now, as I noted, in if you look at the new calendar, we have a lot of new classes. The first uh, week of the year, we're doing a class on leverage stop losses. And um, I don't know, we're covering three things in that class. But we're going to spend more time on more technical parts of tra order entry types. because knowing how to use order entry types and stop losses and different types of stop loss and understanding leverage sometimes will help you trade more successfully than any other indicator in the marketplace. So we'll see you. Um, I think we still have another few classes before the year is over, but then we'll be having few classes over the holiday season and we'll see you in January. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for supporting ETX. And I hope I gave you something to think about tonight. Bye now.